We the Augusta Civic Center as Munza Media is here for tonight's moose call. As we said, Augusta Civic Center is the site for this one. Hello, buddy. I'm Rob Munzing, joined by Andy Munzing, the voice of tonight's game, and Nate Munzing running our production, and Brittany Bourgeois Munzing running our camera here from the Augusta Civic Center. Be Great Bay Community College at 2-0 on the season overall, 1-0 in the YSCC, the University of Maine at Augusta. They're 4-2, 1-0 in YSCC play. So if you're just joining us here for the first time this year, there's been some changes in the rules for the women's basketball this year. They'll play four 10-minute quarters. We'll get into that a little bit more as we go through. So there's a little bit of a change here. Uh, Great Bay Community College, they're coached by Allison Burton, and she's in her first season. Chuck Balboni is there. Assistant Junior coach. Maine, number three, Jamie Glover. So going through the introductions here, let you know what's going on. November, busy month. Back into card. So bring it down. Going to be picked, and we're going to have our first foul of the game as Fluwelling, who is coming off a 33-point game against Uni College in a 65-27 win during their first win as a program, so look for her to get uh, many offensive chances tonight. Toth, long court pass, shot going to be taken and off the rim, no good. Second offensive rebound, so UMA doing a really good job of crashing the boards here early, Rob. Well, those second chance opportunities are going to be big. Rauro will travel, so again, this long offensive possession. We're going to have a couple of subs. Lindsay Clark will check in along with Emily Carter. Card will take a seat as well as LaFontaine. Both teams, uh, small benches, one for the Herons and two for the Moose. Well, when we were talking the other night, uh, I think it was Jamie mentioned that they, even though it's seven people, they still want to play man. So. Nice look for a Fuelling down underneath, but the shot no good by Cronin. Pushed up, Toth has it. Tried to get it down underneath the card. The ball is going to be stolen, and we're going to have our first jump ball the evening, and Moose will keep the ball. We talked about Dobby being a good ball handler, and, and she's really made her presence felt uh, early on here in the season that she's ranked second in the YSCC in assists. She's averaging 5.8 assists a game, so she really moves the ball well. Carter, power move off the glass, no good. Another offensive rebound. Plummer has it, rips it down, goes underneath. And she will put it home, so UMA on the board. Well, they had a lot of possessions to get th those two points, Andy. Certainly did. I think they had four offensive rebounds, so look for that to be prevalent throughout this game. They do have the size advantage down under the hoop. Fluellen will get it, throw it up. Carter gets the ball now. She'll bring it across the timeline and set up the offense. Bragg over to Plummer. Missing the carding cutter. The cutting Carter, excuse me. <laughs> Dandridge will get the rebound. She'll bring it up. Pretty slow place so far here. Just well, you got to think that's going to be a, a little bit of a bench thing here, as you said, the Herons with one and you and May with, with two on the bench. So Marrero being guarded tightly by Bragg. We'll get it in. Fluelling has a little floater. No good. Clark with the rebound, gets it up to Bragg, has Plummer ahead, gets it over to Plummer, she'll take it hard to the hoop, pass it over to Carter, Carter will stop, pop, no good, there's another offensive rebound, Plummer grabs another offensive rebound, and they will reset the offense, Bragg will drive, put a little floater up and in. Number 12, Carmen. Yeah, nice floater by Carmen as she maintained body control going up, dropped it home. Little law pass down inside, going to be corralled by Lambert. She'll stop at the elbow. Flew Wendling down underneath. Good hands by Bragg. That's going to be put off the glass. No good. Another one and done for the Herons. Toff thought about the three. Gets it over to Bragg. She'll take this one. She's wide open. And she makes it. Well, back-to-back. Hoops by Common Bragg. Darby Toff for three. 
Oh, that was tough for three. I'm sorry. Nice pass by Flewelling, but just stripped away by Bragg. Nice front court pass. Clark has it now off the glass. No good. Another offensive rebound. And Plummer, who probably already has five or six offensive boards, will find herself at the line shooting two free throws. Yeah, Jamie's been all over that offensive glass and second chance opportunities. And that's probably been the difference in this one. They're almost in double digits, and we're not even through halfway through the first quarter. Well, like I said earlier, they have the size advantage, and what they're doing is they're working the ball. They've really owned the paint here so far, and they really don't need to change anything on the offensive side. They've been gone to their bench a little bit here. looks like they did that the other night, too, where they really seem, you know, if you've got seven, you rotate in those two fresh bodies, and it really makes a big difference. So LaFontaine will come back in as well as Card. Plummer will get that one to roll in. And we are going to have our first time out of the evening, so we will take a break here just under six minutes to go. The Moose are up by six. Junior Trojan football and cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising. 28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year. We are back after the timeout, and I'm sure Coach Britton was telling her players to, you have to stay on your man, even though they were in that zone, and you have to box out. You've got to find a body. It doesn't matter if it's your man or woman, I should say, excuse me, or not. You have to find a body because right now UMA is owning that paint, offensively and defensively. Another one and done for the Herons. Toth will get it over to Clark, down underneath. LaFontaine has it. She will drive, get it down to the low block. Card has it. No good. Cronin with the rebound, and she will bring it up herself. Kicks it out top. Marrero has it. And the shot is going to be taken, and no good. Nice try on the save was Dandridge after the shot by Lambert. So another one and done. So about halfway through this, first of four quarters... No real hurry for the Moose. Drops it down to Plummer on the block. And that goes off the glass. No good. Lambert with a good strong rebound gets it up to Cronin. Dandridge put a good job on the D that time on Jamie Forster deep. Cronin finds herself in That's trouble and she will travel before. You can't travel that distance without changing your pivot feet. Toth will get it. Card over to Clark. Wide open. Takes a shot. No good. Another rebound by Plummer. No good. Another offensive rebound. Going to be put off. No good. Plummer grabs it again. She will get fouled. And she will go to the line shooting two free throws. Well, same old, same old, Andy, right? We've mentioned that from the very get-go. First possession of the game. Multiple opportunities for the Moose. Plummer banging underneath. She continues to do that. And she's owning the boards, as you've seen. Good. I, I tried to graduate Jamie a year early. I'm sure she was a little surprised when I called her a senior the other day. It just seems like she's been here for like ever. Of course, we've been following Jamie's career since she was a freshman at Richmond High School. So She's played a lot of games up here. Surely has, and some uh, big games in the tournament uh, and some big games for the UMA Moose as she's finally getting it... Uh, Done big time here today on the boards. Yeah, she'll take a little break out and we'll check in for her. Fuelling, the top scorer for the Herons, really needs to get going here. Try to find some open looks and put the ball in the hoop. Yeah, she had a big game, get, uh, Andy, as you said the other night with uh, 30. 33. 33. Got to give credit where credit is You've due. You got it. Nice move right there. No good, but another offensive rebound. Clark will corral it. Get it over to Toth. Off the stop, Bragg has it, but goes in into two. Her foot was on the line. Another offensive rebound, and Clark will make the Herons pay as she hits Number the little jumper. Lindsay out of Cornish, New Hampshire. Lebanon High School. 
So right now, if you're the Herons, what you want to do is continue your game plan. You haven't had a lot of offensive chances, but what you've got to do is just get Fluelling. Shooters have to shoot, so Fluelling needs to get the ball. Someone goes off the side, offensive rebound, off the glass, up and in. As Daphne Jordan gets the put back, and we will have another timeout here from the Augusta Civic Center. 3.24 to go here in the first quarter. The score is 12-6, to Moose over the Herons. We will be back. Junior Trojan football and cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year. So we're back live here at the Augusta Civic Center. We had a full timeout, so both teams are still talking over their strategy. And the Herons really need to get something going offensively. They're down 12-4 to right now. They really haven't had a chance to set up their offensive. They've had some scattered shots here and there, but no real offensive set yet, Rob. Well, one and out, basically, when they come down on offense so far, the Moose have done a terrific job on both boards. And, Andy, you've mentioned the second-chance opportunity so far for the Moose have been plentiful, and they've cashed in on it. Toth has it slapped away by Fluelli. Dropping it down to Carter. Carter has it. Kind of finds herself in no man's land down there. Gives it over to Clack. Clack long, dangerous pass cross court. Toth has it, spots up, and nails it. Boy, just like you love to see. Toth with a three with the shot clock at four. Fluelli across the timeline, and that was a deep three, too. Fluelling tried to force it down underneath. And Lambert could not corral it, but last touch by the Moose. Yeah, Carter did a nice job sliding over, beating the offensive player to the spot. Close to five seconds, Cronin gets it in. And another scattered offensive possession for the Herons. Toth has it. So do a little hesitation. Reset. Bragg will take the three and nail it. Tom in for three. It's hard to it's hard to defend in transition. That's the thing. If you're playing against a zone team, what you can do is get into transition basketball, get the ball across the timeline, and get and get to the defense before they can get into that zone, and then you kick it out to the three, and it's wide open because they haven't had a chance to set yet. Yeah, Common's got a quick release too, as we saw. She's always. Looking to take that three as she should because she's a terrific shooter for the Moose. They have a lot of deadly threats. They've got Toth, they've got Bragg, Plummer can hit from outside. Um, Clark had two three pointers uh, last Thursday when we did uh, did a game up here, so that's going to stay here in basketball. 2.06 to go, 18 to 4. And I'm not sure if Flewelling has even taken a shot yet. Well, you know, she came in as probably the focus of the defense, and they've surely done a nice job on the shutdown. Nice play by Marara, a little tip pass, and she tipped it right to Lambert, and Lambert puts it up and in. Nice play by Marara, good body control. Yeah, she did, and Lambert got it off. That was a tough one to corral. Nice inside pass to Card. Card tried to get it over to Carter. Ball's going to be stolen. Carter's going to have it. She's going to kick it out. Clark will get it to Bragg. Who will reset. Card down in the corner. She'll get it back. Power move off the glass. Up and in. Pretty play. Nice move. You can tell she practices that. Because she found that block and she knew exactly where she was. Ball almost stolen by Toth. Fluelling has it. Morgan, a freshman on that good Ellsworth team last year. Nice move right there, but unable to cash in. Card with a good rebound, gets it up. Clark running up the sideline. And she will take it to the hole, get it blocked, get it back, get it in. Almost a self-pass by... Off to the defender, and God, it was able to pick it right back up. Oh, was that Clark? I'm sorry, that was Clark. Flowing in a little bit of trouble, being guarded tightly by Toth. Ball's going to be tipped around, and Card is going to have it. Lose it, and we're going to have a jump ball, and that will stay. Heron's basketball, we're going to have a substitution. LaFontaine will come in 
And Clark, who's played very well so far today, will go get a drink of water and a little break. Punter still on the bench, probably sit out the rest of this first quarter. Yeah, Jamie's had a longer break than uh, you normally get. So well, you usually get a long break when you're up 22 to six. And yeah, Moose played over the weekend, had some travel, and they look pretty good. They sure do. Nice no look pass by Toth. Oh, pretty nice play. When I see why Dobby is ranked second in the league in assists and you know the 5.8 per game, she's should be close to that again tonight, if not over. Long three by Fluelling off the back of the rim, no good. Ball going to be corralled by Dandridge. She's got it back to Fluelling. Ten seconds to go. Shot clock turned off. Nice drive by Fluelling. She'll take it to the rack, and we might have the foul will be on the floor. Yep. Good so, call by Al Cloutier. Yep. And Andy got it. Contact made out about the free throw line, so Dandridge will have it. 8.4 to go, 24 to 6. Moose with the big lead here in the first quarter. Ball tipped away by the Moose. Marrero will take the shot, no good. So the Moose will have one more chance here with 4.6 to go. Toth will wait till the last second to grab it. Darby has it. Gets it over. LaFontaine will stop. Pop. Front rim. No good. Rebound by Flewelling. She'll have a couple more dribbles. Long three taken and no good. So that wraps up the first quarter of play here from the Augusta Civic Center. The UMaine Moose are up 24-6. to six over the Great Bay Community College Champions. We'll be back for the second quarter next. Junior Trojan football and cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year. Trojan football and cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year. We're back here at the Augusta Civic Center to start the second quarter. When you get down by a large deficit like this, one of the first things you have to do is really buckle down on defense. And I know that's easier said than done, but you've really got to start contesting shots because UMA right now has had some very easy looks. Bragg didn't even have anybody in her face right there. And it's easy to get discouraged when you're down by 20, but it starts on the defensive end because the buckets will come if you if you play good defense. Well, I think a good example of that, Andy, was the other night when the, the main, uh, the Moose men got out of... Uh, Really just flying out of the gate there against uh, Central Maine Community College, and that's exactly what Central Maine did. They just stayed with the D, and they got back in and ended up winning the game. Yeah, that was a great basketball game. We'll see the men later here against Great Bay Community College men, uh, second game of the doubleheader. Welling a little floater, no good. You can tell that she's taking that shot twice, so those will, can, those will fall if she continues to shoot. Nice little scuffle right there, and it will be, they haven't changed the arrow, so it will be here in ball. Common Bragg with the good hustle on the D, Common. Shooting lights out so far in this one. Maybe high score. Nice play by Carter. She'll take it herself. Bragg over to LaFontaine, dumps it down to Kyd, who's played well today. Oh, tried to get off the glass, but another board. Nice skip pass over to Carter. Carter will shoot, bounce around, no good. Good board and good body control by LaFontaine coming in and not going over the back. Great play. So Caitlin LaFontaine is making her presence felt as well, the freshman out of Mount Ararat High School. I think you were calling her LaFontaine. <laughs> I was. Yeah. 
four kids. She says, I don't have to change my name for those crazy announcers. La Fountain Caitlin was a great high school basketball player for Mount Ara at the Eagles. She had some big games in here and it got the Civic Center in her career. Nice three right there by Dandridge, who stopped, popped, and nailed the three. Down on the block, card has it, no good. And it's going, ball is still in bounds. Nice play by Dandridge. Well, hit the three, and then the good hustle play by Dandridge at the other end. Long three, no good. Bragg will push the ball up. Carter will have it. Toth corrals it, puts it up, no good. Ball is going to be tracked down by LaFountain. Toth thought about it. You may be very patient, working around the perimeter in no hurry. 28 to 6. Nice pass down in. Carter will get it in the corner. So try to go baseline. Bounce. Tried that skip pass over to the fountain, but no good. And we're going to have a couple substitutions. Clock will come in along with Plummer. And Toth will get her first break of the evening. And Card will get a quick sit as well. 6.58 to go. The Herons just want to chip away at this lead as best they can. It's a defense from the Moose. Most of the shots have been fairly well contested so far. Not much of an opening either way. Yeah, you're right, Andy. Moose have been playing that good, tough, hard nose matchup D. As that one is up and no good. One and out again. Again. Plummer back in. The Fountain almost has it stripped away. Clack will have it blocked by Dandridge. Nice play there. Dandridge, very athletic. Saw him make the nice save on a previous possession. That time, the swat away. Hit the long three. Jamie will put it off the glass, and that one is going to be corralled by Moreau. Moreau will try to put it up. Nice defense by Plummer, just staying straight up. No foul called. Good take by Marrero there, but no one there to pick up the loose ball. Carter, little head fake. We'll get it back out. Bragg wide open. We'll stop and nail it. She's on target tonight. She's got two threes, 31 to 9. And the Moose being very patient, taking very high percentage shots. Even the threes are high percentage because they have rebounders underneath the hoop and they're wide open. Fluellen gets it to Morrow. He'll go baseline, a little float, no good. Ball tipped around. Here's Dandridge again. She'll put it up off the glass, no good. Good strong rebound by LaFountain. Gets it to Bragg. She'll push it up across the timeline. Stop, get it over to Clark. Clark will get it to Plummer, who was cutting nicely. No good. Ball tipped around, still loose. Carter on the ground. Good fight, and the Moose will retain possession. We're going to have a substitution for the Herons. Lambert will check in, and Morara will take a break. 5.14 to go. Nice little touch pass. Two-pointer. Well, Common's rotation on the ball is perfect tonight. You saw it there. We got a good look at it. Boy, she's really, really on tonight. A lot of her shots have been all uh, net tickles, nothing else. It was a nice entry pass by Clark, and the plumber just with a little tip pass over to Bragg, and Bragg nailed it. Dandridge with a nice look, another off a nice offensive rebound there by Lambert, and she will get a reward, and she'll take two free throws. Yeah, that's something that they hadn't been doing, as we mentioned uh, earlier, but that time on the boards that time and keeping it alive caused the foul. Foul situation, as we said, a reset here. So with the uh, in the second period, one foul on the Moose, none on the Herons. Well, another thing you want to do with if you're an offensive team and you're being you have really good defense playing against you need to be crashing the boards because most of the shots are contested so the percentage of them going in is not as high because you've got a hand in the face you're getting boxed out after you shoot the ball you got to crash the boards Bragg will get it over to Clark Bragg has had the hot hand 
Gets it down. Nice move by the fountain off the glass, Ooh. up and in. A little, little reverse. Went one way, turned around, and came the other way. Got the defender going one way and said, nope, I'll just go around you. Yeah, nice move up, uh, up and in by Caitlin. She showed that she can play uh, inside, play outside. She's a she's a gifted player. We're going to see a lot of her this year for sure. We're going to see a lot of all seven of them this year, actually. And as we think about it, uh, nice drop. plenty of court time for all of them this year. Certainly will, especially with the low numbers. Carter with a great play right there. Fluellen came down the right side, and Carter just stood her ground and got the charge call. Good call by the officials. Fouls now one and one. Not one and one, one per team. One each. Because there is no one and one anymore. Oh, going to travel. And we are going to have a timeout. We will take a timeout as well. You main moose with a 25-point lead. We will be back after the break. Junior Trojan football and cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year. So you see the the bench of the Great Bay Herons, and they're taking a break. And also, the, what they've done so far has not seemed to work. So they've got to change it up some way or the other, whether it be on the defensive end or the offensive end. They are they seem to be outmatched, but what you've got to do is continue to play and instill confidence in, in your team, which is not always an easy thing to do. Cronin will pass the ball in. Dandridge will bring it up for the Herons. Just under four minutes to go in the first half. Pretty clean game so far. Dandridge trying to make something. She'll pick up her dribble. Guarded closely by Plummer. And that one's going to be stolen by Carter, who's been all over the place on the defensive end so far tonight. She'll stop and set up the offense. Gets it over to Clark. Bragg with a swing pass to Plummer. Thought about the three. Gets it back over to Bragg. And also what this does, too, when you get a big lead like this, you're allowed to work on some different things. And that's a very nice play drawn up just the way you play in practice. LaFountain with a nice left hand and off the glass and in. Yeah, beautiful patented half-court offense there. Well executed by the Moose. It's always nice when you talk about something in the huddle and then it happens exactly right, the way exactly. you up. That foul is going to be on Bragg. As Flawling hit the hit the deck. Well, and yet to score tonight of the 10 points that the Herons have. Dandridge has a, a very long three tonight. Fluelling on the block. Try to get it over, and that is last tipped, and Herons will retain possession. Trying to get it down on the low block. The fountain with some good defense is Dandridge again. Well, she's a hustler, isn't she? She's really, all over the floor. I like I like her game. She really plays hard, Monique Dandridge. Yeah, she sees the ball very well. A couple of subs. Toth will check back in along with Cod. The fountain will take a break, and Bragg will go get some water. Clock will get it to Toth, and she will set the offense for the Moose. Clark will stop, pop, no good, long rebound. Cronin has it, gets it over to Dandridge across the timeline. Lambert will drive off the glass, no good. Just can't seem to get that cover off the rim. They've had some pretty good looks cutting across the lane, just has not been able to fall. 
Plummer with a nice hard drive. Going to be blocked by Dandridge, but the ball goes right to Card, and she will be fouled. So right place at the right time was Card, and she gets fouled, so she will get two shots. Yeah, but a nice play by Dandridge as she came right over, challenged Jamie Plummer, went up with a clean block, no body, and the Moose got a nice break on that one, as you Certainly said, did. as the ball went right over to Morgan Card. She hits one of two. Lead now extended to 28. No good. Nice rebound. Long three by Fluelling. Back iron. No good. Clark with the long rebound. Nice pass by Plummer down underneath. Card has a block but gets it back. Finds the cutting plumber, came all the way across. Dandridge the got a piece of that. Layup. Yeah. And that's going to be a travel. Yeah, that was a nice play by Dandridge again. She is everywhere. Really got to like the way that uh, that she's been playing here tonight. I mean, it's a 28-point lead. They're down, down by 28, but she continues really to play well. And doing the small things, you know, that, uh, that sometimes get hard to do. Nice look right there. Plummer nails that one. Spot up and in 41 to 10. 115 to go. Down on the left block. Nice defense by Cod. Nowhere to go. As Lambert was stonewalled and not by Jackson. Time you can work a Civil War reference and you want to. <laughs> Marrero has it. Being guarded by Carter. Carter there. No good. Ball tipped around. Nice hands by Lambert. Get it back over to Fluelling. Just under a minute to go. Cronin has it. Being double teamed and not sure what the foul. I don't know if it's going to be on the floor. If the basket counts. They haven't, they haven't uh, indicated. Yeah, they're going to yep, count it. They yeah. are going to count it. They're so. Gonna count it. Nice play by Cronin, and see if she can convert the three-point play. 37.1 to go, 41 to 12. And that one is off to the side, ripped down by Plummer. We'll get it over to Toth, look to see probably one shot here. A couple second difference between the shot clock. Down on the block, nice little handoff, good ball movement by the Moose. Marrero has a long rebound. Flewelling has it. Ball's going to be stolen by Clark. Clark will push it up to Plummer. Plummer has it now. And she will go over the right side off the glass. Up and in. Nice body control by Jamie Plummer. As she gets the hoop. And that will end the first half of play. The UMA Moose with a commanding lead. 43-12. to We will be back for the second half action. Live here from the Augusta Civic Center. Junior Trojan Football and Cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year. Junior Trojan Football and Cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year.
So we're down here between halftime and some special things that always happen here at UMA. Tonight, we have the uh, Amy Buxton, is it a foundation, Mom, or Amy Buxton Pet Pantry? Tell us a little bit about this. Well, the Amy Buxton Pet Pantry was named after my daughter, Amy, um, who was a humanitarian and um, had a heart as big as Maine, and she loved animals. And so um, South Parish is our church that we grew up with, and... um, we thought, or the church thought, it would be very nice to have a pet pantry in her honor to help folks who want to be able to keep their pets as opposed to giving them up because they can't afford to feed them. Well, that's a, certainly a wonderful, wonderful way to remember Amy as she was very much conscious of pets and loved her pets very, very much. Brittany was telling me up there that she played basketball with Amy and how great a, a person she was. And certainly this is a, a great, great way to remember her. So what are some of the things besides tonight that, that the um, foundation's going to be doing, the pet pantry? Well, um, we did some grants to help people with spay and neutering. And we try to educate them on the importance of spay and neutering and being able to, you know, just kind of educate them. We give them, um, you know, like tips on flea medications, not medications, but like home remedies you can make for them that don't cost very much. And just try to help, you know, as economically as we can. So where can people find out information about the, uh, where they can contribute to the pet pantry or what kinds of things are you accepting or anything along that way? We accept any and all donations. Um, The South Parish Congregational Church office is open uh, Tuesdays through Friday from uh, 9 to 1. People can drop things off as well as we have a Facebook page. Um, that people can, if they want to make donations, can let one of us know. We'll be more than happy to go and pick it up. Uh, We accept monetary donations, volunteers. um, You know, we take anything. And cats are the things that we we service the most. We have more clients with cats than, than anything else. Well, that's certainly a, a great way to remember Amy and Mrs. Buxton and, and all the people that are helping out here. Certainly help them out. Find them out on Facebook. Send them a Facebook message. They'll respond to it, and they'll tell you exactly what you got to do to help out the pet pantry in Amy's name. Well, we want to thank you for coming on, and thank you for being here tonight. And when we come back, we'll have the second half of action from the Augusta Seventh Center after this. Junior Trojan Football and Cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year. Junior Trojan Football and Cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year.
And we're getting ready to start action. The Herons have quite a hole to dig, but what you can talk about at halftime is just don't worry about the scoreboard. Just go out, play good sound defense, and try to get some good offensive shots and some good offensive possessions. Not starting off too well as Bragg with the quick hands will go off the glass. No good. Plummer with the rebound will have it blocked by Flewelling. She'll come down with the ball. She'll kick it over. Marrero, stop, pop, no good. Long offensive rebound taken down by Lambert in the corner. Going to be doubled up. And Connick found herself in no man's land there. And Plummer made her pay, got the jump ball, and now it'll be Moose basketball. So if you're the Moose right now, really what you can do is what they started to do midway through the second quarter. We'll start working on some different things on offense that you might have to use later on in the season. Still in that 2-1-2 zone, you can start picking, a, picking apart with some different plays that you haven't been able to use so far early in the season. Well, one of the things to look at, too, is, you know, Coach Laney. I mean, it's not, not like she can clear the bench. I mean, you know, the, the kids you see in the game are going to continue to rotate in the game. But you're right, they'll, they'll change the focus a little bit and give some other folks maybe uh, change their role a little bit. Jamie, nice left to... Well, and also, too, you can't, tell, you can't tell your players not to score. You can slow it down, but also, too, you know, you still do have that shot clock, so you're going to have to work the ball around, and you don't want to be, you know, having to shoot the ball with five seconds frantic, and you don't want to play, that's bad basketball, so you're not going to play bad basketball. You're going to play your style of ball, and if you end up, you know, putting the team out of the gym, you're not doing it intentionally. You're doing it because you're a good team. Well, nice play by Flo Arling there as she, off the dribble, went up and popped it home. Nice Play by Fluong. Toth gets it over to Bragg. Down in the corner. Card has it now. A little give and go with Bragg. Bragg underneath to Jamie. Nice play. It's kind of the way you draw it up. Jamie was sitting right up at the elbow. You work it down in the corner, and then all Jamie did was just slide down to the lower block. And after the, the give and go from Card to Bragg to Plummer, up and in. Yeah, you know, we've seen Jamie over the years, and she's equally good either either hand and she can finish and that's a tough assignment for a defender there when she can go either way and that's the importance if you're a young basketball player watching any of these develop both hands makes it that much more difficult to defend it certainly does working it around the perimeter down on the block Plummer has it kicks it to Bragg Bragg almost had it down and Marrero will come around with the rebound she's got Flewelling up ahead just not enough on the pass. Welling will stop, pop a long three-pointer, and nail it. So, first three of the game. She had four three-pointers in, um, in the record-setting first win for the program, but she had 33 against Unity. So that one's going to be up and in. A nice look right there by LaFountain. As Toth wreaking havoc in the backcourt on Fluellen. Keeping her poise. She'll stop at the foul line. Try to get it down underneath, but LaFountain saw that thing all the way. And she'll record the steal. Yeah, nice uh, defensive sag uh, basket yep. line play by Caitlin. And playing off the ball smartly. Nice pass. Card LaFountain has it. Couldn't get it. Plummer with another offensive rebound. She has to be in double digits. Toth behind the line. And the net, <laughs> that would have been something else because yeah. all it has to do is go through the cylinder. So if that would have popped out, it still would have been good. Really? That's interesting. Because of the, the net would have caused, the, caused it to come out, right? Right. Well, that's what happens when you have an official with you. That's always good. Six and a half to go here, second quarter. No fouls on either team yet. Flawling going up and under, can't get it. LaFountain with a good hard board. Gets it over to Bragg. She'll get it across the timeline easily. She'll stop at the elbow. Pop, no good. Tries to get her own rebound. Goes right to Plummer. Plummer with a bounce pass. Card has it. Goes baseline a little up and over. And they're going to call a travel on. She slid her pivot foot just a little bit. So good call by the officials there. Cronin has it. Gets a bounce pass down to Flewelling. She's being guarded closely by Bragg. Dandridge came over for the pick. Flewelling went backside. Dandridge will stop. Three. No good. Board. Plummer.
Card has it down underneath. Nice little give and go is kind of the same play we saw a couple of possessions ago where all Plummer did was just slide down from the elbow. The Fountain has it. Nice move off the glass and in. Good job by LaFount. She thought about the left hand, but the defender was there, so she switched it over to the right and got it in. 54-17, commanding lead for the Moose. Going to have a couple of substitutions the next stop to play for the Moose. Flewelling being guarded tightly by Bragg, as she has been most nights. So really, give, uh, give credit to the defense played by Bragg and Toth on shutting down Flewelling, who's a very good player. Dandridge has it off the glass. No good. Rebound by Plummer. Bragg with a bounce pass to the fountain. Has it back over to Cod. Cod pushes it out. Shot's going to be taken by Plummer and in just inside the three point line. So that will be a long two point shot for Plummer. Dandridge going to take the three. No good. Off the front of the rim. Long board by Bragg. Another one and done as we've seen so far tonight. Kind of seems to be the, the way it's been going for the Herons. The fountain stop pop, and we are going to have a. Full timeout. We will take the break as well. 4.31 to go third quarter. Commanding lead for the Moose. We will be back to the Augusta Civic Center next. Junior Trojan football and cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year. I want to give a shout-out back to uh, Michael Montno, who always watches us. His team NHTI in the YSCC. And uh, thanks, Ma uh, Michael, for uh, chiming in. Hope to see you when NHTI comes up in February. Shout-out to all the parents who are watching. From uh, both sides, we know it's hard sometimes to get to the games, and sometimes you're well away, so that's one of the advantages, and we thank all the fine folks at UMA for bringing us on board. Been here four years now. Yeah, both the men and women moose will be traveling down to NHTI this weekend to participate in the, uh, the Hogan's Camps Men Thanksgiving Tournament. Some discussion down there on the floor. Dandridge has played a good overall game tonight, but she really, really plays hard. Monique Dandridge, she's out of Lynn, Mass., went to Lynn English High School. Try the finger roll just short. She's supposed to make that when I'm talking about her, Andy. It's usually the way it goes. You always feel good about <laughs> yourself when that happens. Lynn English, a big school in Lynn, Massachusetts. Plum with the three. Marrero has a lot of rebounds for side. She seems to be in the right place at the right time to, to grab those defensive boards. Three going to be taken. No good. Off balance. Marrero thought about trying to get it back in play, but she stepped on the line before she tried to get the ball in play. So the Moose will bring the ball up. 3.47 to go. 58-17. to 17. And Toth will take the three. Nobody took ball, and she's going to make him pay. Just kind of like walks up and Sticks the three. A little miscommunication there on the defensive end for the Great Bay Herons. And Toth usually looking to uh, make the assist, but you leave her open, she'll she'll make you pay. Yeah, she kind of had to shoot that one. You know, sometimes those point guards are so unselfish they don't take their shots, but they've got a muscle tussle going on there. Good no call is... There was no possession to be to be had during that. That was a good play. Morrow just kind of got ahead of herself. She, she wanted to kind of go off the glass maybe with a little finger roll, but she picked the, the dribble up just a little bit too early and kind of found herself in uh, no man's land. Carter gets it over. Clark down underneath the cad. No good. And Dandridge with another rebound. She's close to double digits in boards tonight. Dandridge with a nice take to the hoop off the glass. No good, just a little too strong. And Carter will corral the board, get it to Plummer. Plummer will get it up. Toth across the timeline. 2.37 to go. 
Third quarter of play. Down on the block to Card. She'll just thought about the drop step. Nice look by Plummer. Tried to get it over to Clark, but tipped away by Fluellen. Good defense. Card will go all the way across. Clark, who slid baseline right over to that far block, gets it and puts it up. Nice play by Lindsey Clark for the yeah. easy two. I think Lindsey knew if she went that spot, she was going to get the ball, and she was really prepared to put it up from a tough angle, and she got it home. Yeah, she was kind of behind the backboard. That was not an easy shot. Nice defense by Plummer. As Fluelling tried to get the ball down on the low block. And Lambert is down temporarily. I think she might have gotten a knee or an elbow in the in the leg. Well, Jamie read that pick and roll play perfectly and came off on the defense and got right down in the passing lane. I think you're right there. Trying to walk it off as Lambert. Coach Allison Britt is going to go over and check on with her and make sure. Sure, her play is okay. Two minutes remaining. Officials have done a nice job. Sure have. On the first shot clock violation of the game. Good defense by the Moose. As I said, officials done a good job reading the game situation. Two fouls against the Moose here in the third and none against... Great Bay. Nice cut by Carter. Gets a nice look underneath by LaFonda Carter. Movement without the basketball. That's the key to offensive success. Have good fundamentals right there. Long three by Flewelling. Nails it. Well, that's her second or third three. I think the first uh, first one was a two in this uh, in this quarter. So. She said three baskets, two threes. Could see how she could get 33. Nice oh, cut. Absolutely. Clark hands it up to Toth. Carter thought about it. Shot clock running down. Nice hot take by Bragg. No good. Flowing will come up with the ball. Flowing will drive middle, and we are going to have a. Foul called on Toth. That'll be the third foul against the Moose, but they, the fouls will reset at the end of this quarter. Which brings into question, we haven't seen it yet, but um, in a closer game during the fourth quarter, it's funny, I was thinking about this at the beginning of the game, that if you had a deeper bench, you might just send people in to foul because you need to get to five in order to get a stoppage of clock right, and, yeah. and the free throws. So that will be interesting to see. I'm sure before the season is over, we will see that scenario play out. But we haven't seen it yet in the couple of games that we've done up here so far. Well, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, coaches that really work at it, like Coach Laney, she's she been working on those scenarios, I'm sure, in her head and maybe even on paper. That will not count, so at the end of three quarters of play, commanding lead for the Moose. We will be back for fourth quarter action live from the Augusta Civic Center. Next. Junior Trojan football and cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year. So we are back here for the fourth quarter of play. We've got the men's game coming up afterwards. The, uh, the UMA Moose are looking for their first win. They're 0-3, 0-1 in the Yankee Small Spock College Conference, and uh, Great Bay also looking for the first win. So someone will be uh, victorious here tonight and get a win in the, uh, in the win column. I was looking at, um, looking at the, the, height where, the height differential from both teams. We'll be able to see them as they're warming up. But it should, it should, uh, it should be a pretty good game, Rob, hopefully. Well, we'll, uh, we'll see how that plays out. And as you said, uh, both teams looking for a victory here. The Moose played very well against mm -hmm. uh, Central Maine Community College. Got off to that, raced off to that start as Noah Thompson went crazy, tied the school record for most three pointers in a game. And when he, he went eight for 13 on threes, uh, he had game high 28 points, and that was his home debut. And 
he's averaging 13.7 points per game on the season. So stay stay with that one. Uh, Nate Munzing will join Andy for the call of that one as the old guy's going home. <laughs> And Central Maine Community College is a very good basketball team. Yes, you know, they got out to a very early, a little early lead, scored a lot of points. They had 21 points after 10 minutes of play. They were on score, on pace to score a, a lot, and then the game kind of changed pace. The defense uh, stepped up by uh, uh, Central Maine Community College, but um, you may ran the floor very well. We'll uh, we'll be able to see them uh, here next and see which way that they uh, they match up defensively against uh, the the male herons. So the fountain, after a little little tussle, will be at the line shooting two free throws. First one is good. Remember, Munson Media will be your home for home UMA games this year. I think the games that we're going to do on the UMA website are listed as video games, so that's how you find out which games we're going to be doing. We'll do all the ones here. Nice movement. Fuelling with the steal. She'll take it hard to the rack, a little floater, and no good. Guerrero there again, fighting for the ball. The Fountain will have it across the timeline. She'll stop, tried to get the bounce pass over to Carter, but Fluelling did a good job getting all the way back down court for the steal. Eight and a half to go here, fourth quarter of play. Fluelling gets in position for the three, no good, long board. Clark will rip it down, get it over to Bragg. Bragg gets it up to Carter. Carter, stop, pop. No good. LaFountain with the rebound. Back over to Clark. 15 on the shot clock. Bragg will reset. Down in the corner. LaFountain. Nice pass underneath to Cod. Cod takes one dribble and boom to the hoop. Cod side itself a good game tonight on offense and on defense. Really good balance scoring. So uh, right across the board for the yep. Moose here tonight. Nice crossover by Fluelling. Dandridge will take the three, and that looks good from here. As soon as she let that go, it looked like a really good shot. So Dandridge has her second three of the night. She's a good player. Nice smooth shot. Clark, nice pass down underneath. The fountain a little up and under. She's done Ooh. that. That was true. She found herself underneath the backboard, and she had to. I don't know how that how she got that in. That was good body control. Nice hard move to the hoop. No good. Good rebound there by LaFountain, who's been all over the place tonight. Cronin just a little too hard off the glass. Nice little hesitation by Carter. Well, he went for the ball and slapped Carter right on the uh, right on the wrist there. He had that all the way up here. Substitution for the Herons. So Lambert. I want to thank, thank Coach uh, Jen Lane. She sent me some uh, information from the NCAA website that uh, I want to bring up to speed as we're into this fourth quarter. I think we've handled pretty much the following situations and things like that, but there's some other ones uh, that we want to key in on, too. One of them is advancing the ball. The panel approved a rule that allows teams to advance a ball to the front court following a timeout immediately after a made basket in the last 59.9 seconds of the fourth quarter in any overtime period. So that's one of the other rule changes. So that's like the NBA. Same yes. rule. So after a timeout, you move it up. Yep. Teams will also be allowed to advance the ball to the front court after securing the ball from a rebound or change of possession. These scenarios, the ball will be inbound at the 28-foot mark on the side of the court where the scorer's table is located. Someone's going to be knocked out. They also implemented the 10-second back court rule 
during the 2013-2014 season. For the upcoming season, the team will not receive a new 10-second backcourt count when a thrown results from the following. If the ball is deflected out of bounds, ball's held, or technical foul is called. There's also a new post-defense rule that allows defenders to place a forearm on open hand with a bend in the elbow on offensive post player with the ball whose back is to the basket. They've also uh, clarified the bands and amplified music rule, but I don't think we need to go into that. <laughs> <laughs> have they implemented that here? Yes, they have. Oh, they have? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I actually got the rule change, and I actually put something in there. You have to play Simon and Garfunkel pregame now, so that's what the, that's what the rule change is going to be. So my ears don't hurt quite so much. They're probably going to stay with Ludacris. <laughs> you probably don't know who that is. Well, I just know they're Ludacris. This is what happens in a 71-23 to 23 game, folks. Sometimes we try to bring up to date on some stuff. So there's one media timeout, but that won't apply to streaming games. Dandridge, long three, and money. She was looking for the, looking for the foul call, but to no avail. The fountain, down to card, patented move, off the glass, up and in. Morgan, what a good game here tonight, as we said. The freshman out of Ellsworth, Maine, Ellsworth High School graduate. Nice move by up and in. Flew Welling with a nice little dribble expose there. She did kind of like a one-handed crossover. They thought she was going to cross it over to her left, but she kept it in her right, took it to the hoop hard, and got the basket. Yeah, she's a good player. Certainly is. Clark with the long three, nails it. Oh, foot must have been on the line. Al Cludia says two. I'll trust his judgment. He's a little closer. Marrero with the long three. Back iron, tipped around. And we're going to have over the back going to be called on Ashley Lambert. That will be the third team foul for the Herons. The Moose only have one. That's going to be the third on Lambert. Card gets it down to Carter on the block. Bragg. Clark will take the long two and make another one. So she has been spotting up and spot on. Flewellen going across the middle. Dandridge with a long shot. No good. Flewellen with the steal. She'll take it to the hoop. Left hand up and in. Number 11, Mark Flewellen, 4-2. Flewellen with a nice play there. Good control going to the hoop, getting that left-handed basket. Clark thought about it, gets it to LaFountain. LaFountain will go hard to the hoop. A little bit of contact, but no whistle. Ball, the ball will go out of bounds, and it will stay Moose basketball. They will inbounds the ball. Brad gets to the little fountain. Back over to Clark, who's had the hot hand. This is a three if it goes. No good. Front rim. Herrero has had a good game rebounding the ball in a couple of baskets tonight. <laughs> Nifty little pass to Fluelli. Long will go hard. Up Ooh, pretty. And in. Not sure who tipped the last, so we go to the other official and who had the better angle. That's why you've got three officials out there, six eyes. Clark gets down to card. Thought about backing in. Kicks it back out. Gets it from a brag. Ball still around and not exactly sure what the call was, but we had a double dribble on card. Good defense by the Herons. 3.50 to go. 77 to 30. Long with the long three. That's from the parking lot. No good. Dandridge with another rebound. Kind of came off the glass at an awkward angle. Kind of caught her 
a little a little funny, and she's still down. I think she got hit by a player. Yeah, I think so too, Andrew. And she's going to need a break. Maybe not. She was signaling, but looks like she's okay, so that's good. Well, remember, um, Jordan Cronin went out, remember, earlier, so she might, well, she's at the scores table, so she's going to come in, so. Well, if nobody gets it over to Marrero. We'll stop, get it picked by the fountain. Bragg brings it up, gets it over to Carter. Card, who's found herself in that position all night, ripped down by Dandridge. Long three by Marrero is off the rim, no good. Ripped down, ball is going to be loose. We're going to have a jump ball, and the Moose will retain possession. Substitution, Cronin will check in. Jordan will take a break. 2.41 to go. Fourth quarter. It's been all moves so far today. They got out early and stayed out ahead. They've just been all over the place on the defensive glass early, on the offensive boards early, and just really overmatched um, the Herons tonight, Rob. Yeah, well put, Andy. They really uh, you know, asserted their will from the get-go, just like that, as they continue to do here as Lindsey Clark inside for the putback. But that started early and continued. You looked at it. Early on, he said, well, the, the Moose are going to have the advantage off the glass, but it's one thing to look down there and see it, another thing to go do it. Toth is going to check in. And Card, who's played very well tonight, double digits probably in both rebounds and points for Morgan Card. Look for the Moose to just kind of pass the ball around the perimeter. Use some of the shot clock. Clark will let it fly. Toth tries to save it, gets it, but her foot was just on the line. Tried to get it underneath to Carter. We'll next be back here next uh, week from tomorrow night on the 24th as Southern Maine Community College Arch in-state rival doubleheader. 6 o'clock women's start, 8 o'clock men's start. It'll be Hollowell Food Bank Night. Free admission with a donation of a non-perishable food item. There's Amy Buxton, Pet Pantry Night here tonight. We had a great interview with Mrs. Buxton and talking about Amy's memory and and uh, certainly a wonderful way to remember that wonderful young woman who lost way too early. Toth trying to get it down to Carter on the little block. Little tricky dribble, nice little skip pass over to Carter. Clark, excuse me. Dandridge with another nice play. Some tricky dribbles. Nice play by Bragg, just kind of throws it ahead. The fountain will come up with it, get it over to Toth, just under a minute to go here. So it looks like the, the Moose will... Get chalk up one in the wind column. They will move on to five and two, two and zero oh in the conference here so far this year. And uh, Great Bay Community will go to two and one, and they are going to be one and one in the Yankee Small College Conference. So the Moose will travel to uh, Maine Machias to play their third conference game in a row before heading down to NHTI for the weekend to participate, as Andy said, in the Hogan Camps Men's. Thanksgiving Day tournament. That's for the the men's team, and I'm not. I would imagine uh, Maine Machias will also be a, a women's game as well. Yeah, they will be at Maine Machias on Thursday, and then they will also head down to NHTI. And there's the uh, Thanksgiving Day tournament down there. Well run tournament, NHTI. 
Koth has the ball right now, one of her stats that we had alluded to earlier was that she's ranked second in the YSCC with 5.8 per game, and I'm sure that she might even be uh, above that tonight on official. Yeah, I think so, Andy. She really had a nice game and fed her teammates and put them in a good position and certainly uh, continued her great unselfishness as your quintessential point guard to, to feed the scorers. And there was a bevy of scoring here tonight, 81 points right here for the Moose women. And it, you know, we don't have the official stats. This will be coming out shortly afterwards. You can catch those up on the UMA website, but uh, good balance scoring. So this one is coming to a close. Flewelling will lose the ball. Morara will put it up, and that will do it for us here for our first game of our doubleheader. The U Maine Moose women come out with an 82-30 win over the Great Bay Community College Herons. We will be right back here at the Augusta Civic Center for the men's game. And uh, thank you for joining us. We will be back in a little bit, and thank you once again. <laughs>